watched by more people than any other network. ABC. You're watching News 8 New England. And now, Janine Lauber, Mike Clark, Chief Meteorologist Lou McNally, and Sports with Steve Minnick. This is 11 on 8. This Bethel man is accused of impersonating a psychologist. Authorities say he counseled more than a dozen patients before anyone found out he was a fake. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Mike Clark. Janine is on assignment tonight, and this is 11 on 8. Our top story, a so-called doctor in Bethel has attracted the attention of the Oxford County Sheriff's Department, the State Attorney General, the FBI, and even the U.S. State Department. Charles Gill is behind bars tonight, accused of being an imposter. News 8 New England's Lisa Gardner has this exclusive story. Plenty of people trusted the man they knew as Dr. Charles Gill. They weren't given any reason not to. Gill started working as a clinical psychologist at the Bethel Area Health Care Center last spring. They use the term scam. But just a few days ago, some of his patients told this Oxford County detective that they didn't think Gill was a real doctor. Corporal Chris Wainwright checked him out and confirmed their suspicions. We're taking it pretty serious. Uh, th this person is uh, he's pretty crafty. He's uh, put a lot of time and effort into this, um, this so-called scam. The so-called scam in Maine is just the beginning. Officials in Ohio say Gill hung out a shingle in that state, too, and ended up spending 18 months in prison. New Hampshire has its own investigation underway, and the FBI and Maine's Attorney General are looking into fraud charges after learning that Gill may have billed Medicare and Medicaid for his services. Anyone that has dealt with uh, Charles Henry Gill uh, is very willing to, uh, to cooperate, and they've really gone out of their way today to really give me a hand on this and give me some assistance on uh, finding out who he is and what his story is. Would that be something that the health... George Larson is also interested in finding out what the story is. He runs the Bethel Area Health Center and says he fired Gill a little more than a week ago. He says he can't comment on the case, but he's making sure Gill's patients are being taken care of. Now, the State Department is also investigating Gill for allegedly posing as a diplomat. Police have a document that appears to be from former U.S. Secretary of State George Schultz, stating that Gill, that Gill is a representative of Switzerland in the World Health Organization. But the State Department told police that Gill has never been a diplomat of any country. In other news from around our region tonight, a major change in policy and a defeat for efforts to allow condom handouts in Maine Public High School. The newly elected Kittery School Committee overturned a voter-approved plan to hand out the condoms to high school students in the York County community. The vote was four to one, and the shift in policy disappoints the school's head nurse who spearheaded the condom distribution effort. I was very pleased that the, the majority of the Kittery um, community supported the program. In our surveys, the parents supported and so did the students. And it's, it's really very sad that the committee would not feel comfortable in supporting it. There will be yet another change in the school committee's makeup later this year when a vacancy is filled and another board member steps down. Once that happens, the nurse plans to try to get the committee to agree to condom distribution. Some anxious and uncertain times for some paper plant workers in Westbrook tonight. More than 100 jobs are on the line for workers at the Weyerhaeuser Corporation's Westbrook facility. Weyerhaeuser says it will close the operation if new owners cannot be found by the first week of February. And an update now for you on last night's deadly shooting in Brunswick. Tonight, police tell us they strongly suspect that a third person was seriously hurt in that incident. Police found bloody clothing today just one mile from the scene, leading them to believe a third person was shot and then fled the area. 27-year-old Jack Frost of Lisbon was killed in the incident at the Lynn Haven Mobile Home Center. Officials say Frost stormed into a Brunswick trailer home and pistol whipped at least one of the home's occupants. They believe the incident was drug-related. Police say several people were inside the trailer at the time of the shooting, and while they say they believe they know who pulled the trigger, no arrests have been made. State legislators met in their respective caucuses today to pick their nominees to the state's constitutional offices. For Attorney General, the Democrats nominated Andrew Ketterer and the Republicans choosing Ken Cole. In the Secretary of State race, the Democrats will be offering Bill Diamond again, while the Republicans chose Charles Summers. For Treasurer, the Democratic nominee is incumbent Sam Shapiro, and the GOP choice is John Bott. The runoff voting will begin tomorrow morning. But not everyone is happy with how Maine chooses constitutional officers. A group calling itself the Maine Citizens Review Board wants to change all that. 
About a half a dozen members of the group showed up on the steps of the Capitol today to begin a petition drive aimed at eventually having popular elections for constitutional officers. A last-minute maneuver has kept the Small Business Administration from shutting down the main aquarium. The owner of the Saco tourist attraction filed for bankruptcy protection yesterday. The SBA had given the aquarium until today to pay up on a half a million dollar loan. But by filing for bankruptcy, the aquarium has now bought itself some more time to come up with the cash. One possible source of some quick money, the sale of 70 acres of land on Route 1 that adjoins the property. Well, you probably haven't boosted the thermostat much this year, and with the cold weather set, uh, yet to set in, heating oil prices are on the decline in much of the state. Maine's planning office says the statewide average cash price for a gallon of home heating oil is 70 cents a gallon. Prices in southern and eastern Maine are on the decline, but prices in central Maine rose slightly, and things held steady in the northern part of the state. Prices are expected to stay low just as long as the weather remains relatively mild. Our chief meteorologist, Lou McNally, is with us now. And Lou, tomorrow is looking more wild than it is mild. Well, it's going to depend a lot on where you are. My question is, Mike, why can't we remember to leave our tanks empty in the spring when it costs so much more and then tank up now when the heating oil is cheaper? I have to figure that out next year, I guess. At any rate, it will depend on where you are, what you'll get during the day tomorrow. It depends a lot on where you are. Let's take a look at weather spectrum 8. Well, I think we can zero it in a little bit closer than that to the northeast. Here's that rain and shower activity that's going to be threatening the mountains overnight tonight. But coming into the west, the left-hand side of your screen across Lake Erie there, that's the steadier rain, which in some spots in southern Maine, southern and central New Hampshire will turn to snow before tomorrow's done. Got all those details coming up. It will be slippery for some. But stay tuned. We'll be back with you in about four minutes. For this hour, that's the way it looks from here. In our report from across America tonight on 11 on 8, Paul Hill, the man convicted of the murders of a Florida abortion doctor and his escort, will be put to death in the state's electric chair. The former minister shot and killed the doctor and his friend last summer outside of a Pensacola clinic. Hill had contended the killings were justifiable homicide in order to prevent more abortions. Well, yesterday he said he wasn't ready, but tonight he apparently is. U.S. Treasury Secretary Lloyd Benson announced today that he will retire at the end of this month. President Clinton accepted the resignation with, quote, deep regret. He then nominated Robert Rubin as Benson's successor. Rubin currently heads the National Economic Council. 73-year-old Benson says he wants to go home to Texas to spend more time with his family. Former Vice President Dan Quayle is back home tonight after being released from an Indiana hospital where he had been treated for the past eight days for blood clots in his lungs. Doctors said the condition might have been fatal if left untreated, Quayle maintains the problem will not be a factor in his upcoming decision on whether or not he will seek the Republican presidential nomination. Steve Minnick joins us now with a first look at sports. And Steve, it's not looking good for hockey fans tonight. Well, Mike, I'm afraid it's about as bad as it gets. Uh, hockey fans, it sounds like your season is just about cooked. The NHL Board of Governors will gather Monday, at which time they will probably announce no season. Well, sorry to say, but the, no good news for you Celtics fans either. The Knicks knocked him off tonight in New York. That was Charles Smith on the break, dropping in two of his game-high 20 points. 104-90, the final score. Whether you like it or not, we will have more highlights coming up in about the seven minutes. Also ahead, uh, more on what appears to be the end of any hopes to save the NHL season. All right, thank you, Steve. Well, talk about some people having all the luck. Britain's royal family already has millions and millions of dollars, but now they're striking gold, black gold. Experts say an oil field lies directly beneath Windsor Castle, which is Queen Elizabeth's residence outside of London. But if oil is found, the profits will not go to the royal family. A Buckingham Palace spokesperson says the British government would get all the, ca all the cash. And up next, you'll notice the difference in the weather tomorrow. Our chief meteorologist, Lou McNally, is back with your complete forecast. And a bit later, a new house for Mickey Mouse. American's favorite rodent gets new digs for the holidays. Beginning Christmas Day, one of the world's best-loved animated classics comes to life. The Jungle Book. It's the spectacular story of Mowgli, the boy who was raised in the jungle and grew up with the wildest friends of all. Why do you suppose he started this like that? Because to him, you are food. Join Baloo, King Louie, Shere Khan, Bagheera, and Mowgli in Disney's all-new Adventures of the Jungle Book. Rated PG. Starts Sunday, December 25th at a theater near you. 
funny how the most inexpensive thing in this commercial is the car. It's one small car with big ideas. Get to know the newest Geo, Metro. It doesn't cost a lot, and it comes with a lot of great stuff. The new Geo Metro automatically comes with two airbags, crush zones, and a rugged steel safety cage. Because it's a big world out there. Get to know the newest Geo, Metro. Want to know more? Give us a call. Smell anything? A wet dog. Now? Pine needles and a wet dog. Regular air fresheners just cover up odors. Potpourri, pine needles, and a wet dog. But now there's Nutra-Air, a whole new idea. Instead of just covering up, it neutralizes odors with a patented new technology. So the air smells fresh and clean. Could, could you do that again? Nutra-Air clears the air. Oh, he's still here. The high cost of health care? Everyone has a part in keeping it down. So we took what you like about Walmart and what you want in a pharmacy and put it right inside your Walmart store. The result? Walmart's pharmacy department. With professional service and the low price on every prescription. So next time, bring it here. Or ask your doctor to call. Walmart's pharmacy department. Your full service pharmacy right inside Walmart. Always low prices, always Walmart. Chief Meteorologist Lou McNally is in now with your forecast, and it may be messy where you live tomorrow. Yes, or where you drive, which is more important. Yes. It's not going to be for everybody now. As a matter of fact, up in the county or even north of Bangor, it's going to be sunny, but not here. Flurries out there already tonight. Yeah, there's already uh, some leading-edge uh, activity up in the mountains. We'll get right to it for you right now. Here's the uh, big picture of this side of the country. I'll make that this side of the planet, if you please. But finally, the tropical storm season is over, and the tropics are clear. So if you're headed down to the Bahamas or something... You should be in good shape. Here we have the lower 48 now in a broad swath. This is last night's batch of moisture from out of the desert. Remember that rainy season getting underway down there? Working its way all the way across the central portions of the country, up the Ohio Valley, and into the Great Lakes. Now, normally, this would be no problem. It would kind of scoot through south of us, and we wouldn't be concerned. But before it does, warm air is going to ride up over the cold air. Overrunning is what it's called. And that means it's going to be raining and then changing to some snow in some spots before the day's done. Let's zoom in on the northeast and show you what's been progressing the last few hours. Here's those scattered flurries that we were just speaking about. They've rolled in from the west here and they're starting to kick into gear in some of the Green Mountains and also up in some of the Blue Mountains and also to the coastal plain east of Bangor. Some of them are showers, some of them are just scattered flurries, nothing serious. It's when this gets lined up like this tomorrow and all the warm air piles up over it, that's when we're going to see some problems. Our latest reports around New England right now show 47 degrees, 41 at Augusta, but as you go north, you get the cooler air. It's in the 30s now, all the way from the county across through the mountains and into the Pasumpsic River Valley as well. Now, as that air settles down overnight, that's going to set the stage for what's going to go on tomorrow afternoon. That plus the fact that the temperatures will be falling most of the day. It's still pretty comfortable out in western sections of New England as well. Our current reading comes in with a light southwesterly breeze, but watch that shift around to the north tomorrow, which will help to drop the temperatures. Humidity at 83%. The barometer, which was steady up until just now, has begun to fall. Okay, for tomorrow across the north country, from Carabasset Valley back to Sutton, Vermont, and Franconia Notch, you will be looking for some cloudy skies, and what may begin as a sprinkle will be turning to some snowflakes in most locations. And there'll be an inch or two of accumulation here and there, too. Temperatures right close to the freezing mark, so some protected valleys Maybe icing up. Could be slick driving in the high ground tomorrow. Portsmouth, up to Sanford, Lewiston, and Portland. This area here may see some slushy accumulation tomorrow. It'll be mostly rain down east towards Rockland, but even there, it may change to a snowflake before the day's done. Temperatures are going to be basically in the 30s, but they'll start off warmer and turn cooler during the day. So another thing you might think about would be to take a warmer jacket than you might expect when you first leave in the morning. It'll get cooler by afternoon. For marine interest now, that northerly breeze is what's going to bring the cold air in. And we've got that in the marine forecast for you, too. North to northwesterlies at 10 to 20 knots will be up to 20 to 30 knots Wednesday. So there's three to five footers out there. 
and visibility will be down to about one to three miles. Here's the forecast now. Partly cloudy skies with a few mountain flurries. There's some patchy fog elsewhere. Temperatures are in the 30s, and who got that sunset shot? Mm -hmm. that one, uh, well, I don't want to mention a, if it was one person or another because everybody does such great work there. Cl clouding up and rain and snow developing. Well, that's beautiful. Uh, now, the rain and snow is only going to be in southern sections. It'll start as rain, turn over to snow, and by late in the day tomorrow, it may start accumulating. So later in the day will be the tough driving. Turns slippery in spots during the day on Wednesday with temperatures in the mid-30s. Clearing for Thursday and Friday, but staying chilly. So in some spots where you may get a rut of slush, mm -hmm. it may stay there. A little trolley tracks in the driveway action. And it looks like another chance of rain and snow on Saturday. Friday looks pretty good. So far, so good. Now, if you want your latest forecast, don't forget to call here at the Skyline, 1-800-708-8818. Your Skyline weather forecast will be right there, waiting for you 24 hours a day. Count them <laughs> this hour. That's the way it looks from here. Thank you, Lou. Well, Steve Minnick is next with sports, and the Red Sox are talking about bringing in a big stick. Yes, the uh, trade winds are starting to whip up again, and uh, what do you think? Uh, what would uh, Jose Canseco uh, have? Yes, I see one fan there who would love to see more of this. <laughs> He came home on Christmas Eve and someone had broken into our house and stolen all of our Christmas presents. And we called Walmart and Mike said he would be glad to open the store for us. There's no way I could have even thought about saying no because those kids, I mean, they had nothing for Christmas. We were able to fill up three whole shopping carts full of toys. Just knowing those kids had a Christmas really made it worthwhile to me. We try to make your day a little brighter, holiday time or any time. Walmart gave me the best Christmas present I've ever had. Please stand by for an important leadership alert from your Ford dealer. Now, the company that brought you five of the ten best-selling vehicles in America brings you 2.9% financing on Ford Taurus. 2.9 could mean over $3,800 in total savings, drastically reducing your monthly payments. Choose from a great selection of 94 and 95 Taurus wagons, sedans, even the sporty SE. All with dual airbags and low, low 2.9% financing. So hurry to your New England Ford dealer today, because 2.9% financing ends soon. They're teenagers pregnant with biracial babies, and their parents are outraged. Next Sal, tomorrow at 9, only on News 8 New England. Don't miss it this weekend, 10 to 5. The 17th Annual Holiday Craft Show, sponsored by United Maine Craftsmen. They put the ho-ho-ho back into Christmas shopping. For generations, folks have made skillins a holiday tradition. For trees, poinsettias, wreaths, and now for holiday gifts. We tend our gift collection as carefully as our greens to give you beautiful gifts for everyone on your list. Gifts for the kitchen, the bath, the baby. And when you stop by for your holiday plants in Falmouth or Brunswick, visit our gift collection. And this year, give more than a gift. Give a tradition from Skillins. And remember, at Skillins, we should... I was in an accident and need a lawyer. Who will help me? Hardy Wolf and Downing can help. Please give us a call. Hello again, everyone. I'm afraid to say if you're a hockey fan, you are probably out of luck. It sounds like we have reached the bitter end. NHL owners and players broke from their meetings this afternoon, both claiming there's little chance to save the season. The players say the final straw was the owner's attempt to introduce a payroll tax. What do you think? Over the last number of weeks, we've been trying to work towards an agreement and giving all the concessions that we've given up in order to have an agreement without a tax. And then now with the tax coming back on the table, the uh, I, I, best way I could characterize it would be very counterproductive. Uh, it doesn't look very good, let me say that. It's um, very disheartening right now. And, you know, the, the, the talks basically broke, uh, broke down uh, today, and uh, they're off for a while now, and I don't know what's going to happen. Well, the final word uh, may come down as soon as Monday. Well, how'd you like to see Jose Canseco in a Red Sox shirt? Still more word that it might happen. The Red Sox have learned the hard way. Canseco is no match for Boston's short porch in left. Stick him in Fenway for half the year, and we could see a whole lot of this. And wouldn't that be nice? Now, here's the deal that's getting bantered about. 
can Seiko to Boston in exchange for speedy outfielder Otis Nixon and a pitcher. Exactly which pitcher, though, seems to be the hang-up. While the Rangers want Ken Ryan, the Sox are said to be offering either Gar Finbold, Nate Minchie, or Tim Van Eggman. Well, finally, let's uh, talk about a sport they are playing. Basketball! Unfortunately, though, as we told you up top, it was a tough night for the Celtics down in New York. Pick it up early, and the Celts looking good. David Wesley takes it away. Dino Raja will jam in two of his game-high 23. But the Celts let it get ugly. After the steal, Herb Williams goes in for the big jam. Celtics down by just one at halftime, but the Knicks open the second half, outscoring the Seas 22-8. Anthony Bonner with the big finish. Celts would then finish the game, missing 24 of 36 shots. Knicks win it 104-90. It's the Seas' third straight loss. One other NBA note. This time tomorrow, all eyes will be looking down on those downtrodden Clippers. Clips are 0 for 16 so far. If they drop their next game to Milwaukee, the Clippers will be in the books, joining Miami for the worst start ever in the NBA at 0 and 17. Okay, now to the uh, local scoreboard. The college basketball, Bowden beat up Thomas 107-59. One boys game called in. It was Lake Region winning by 41 over Freiburg. Just one girls game called in. I know the season's early. Get those scores called in, please. Kenny Bunk, 68-34 over Wells. Some high school hockey tonight. It was Falmouth, 4-2 over Portland. And in college hockey, New England College, a 6-3 winner over Maine. And again, please call those scores in. That's the only way we will be able to get them on the air. Can you imagine a full season of Jose Canseco? That in would Fenway? be uh, mucho home runs uh, in Fenway Park. It would be fun, you know. Uh, just, uh, they need the Otis Nixon speed, though, yeah. although he's getting a little old. Uh, yeah. But they certainly could use that power. If Major League Baseball comes if back If they next ever year. play, right. All right, Steve, thanks a lot. Well, straight ahead in your family's health cast, a national effort is underway to get Americans into shape. But not all weight loss businesses are doing the job right. New reports say some of those programs could be a waste of your money. We'll tell you why. Holidays really bring people closer. When planning a feast for this festive season, stop by our deli for a variety of party platters, like our chicken wing platter, classic fruit and cheese combo, or home meals like the three-foot superhero. Whatever you need, we can help you choose the right platter and the right amount of food. Call our information line for more holiday tips. This year, give yourself time to enjoy the traditions of the season. Do your shopping at the L.L. Bean Retail Store. Our store is filled with thousands of 100% guaranteed gift ideas to choose from, which makes it easy for you to find something for everyone on your list. If you need help choosing the perfect gift, ask one of our friendly sales representatives about this year's most popular presents. Come see us at the L.L. Bean Retail Store and give yourself more time to enjoy the traditions of the season. I'm Ted Koppel. Coming up on Nightline, he's the president's close friend, was a trusted advisor, and now he's pled guilty to two felonies. As the Whitewater investigation deepens, what will the impact be on President Clinton tonight? Presenting Marvin the Magnificent! Hey! Al, listen, there's just too much of these Encore Salisbury steaks for one magician. I can't make these juicy flame broiled steaks disappear all by myself. But you're magnificent. Oh, you can call him Marvin. Marvin. Of course, a two-pound family size entree. I just can't make a family appear. I can. Mine will appear at your place, six tonight. Oh, I can't tackle all this Encore lasagna. Seven tomorrow. I'll bring my team. <laughs> For taste and more, it's Encore. People who get hurt in accidents have a lot of questions. How will I pay for the hospital? And what about all my lost time at work? We have the answers to your questions. What do you mean they don't have any insurance? How am I going to fix my car? I'm Bill Hardy of Hardy, Wolf & Downing. We've helped thousands of people like you. And we'll stop the insurance company runaround cold. If you've been hurt in an accident, call Hardy, Wolf & Downing. We'll take care of things for you. Now, 11 on 8 continues. There's hope tonight that a match can be found for a Turner businessman diagnosed with leukemia who is desperately searching for a bone marrow donor. A blood testing clinic was held tonight at Levitt High School in Turner. The Red Cross tested potential donors. 
Each year, more than 16,000 Americans are diagnosed with a fatal blood disease, and their only chance for survival is receiving a bone marrow transplant. And we'd like to let you know that News 8 New England will air a special report on the critical shortage of organ and tissue donations in our area. The broadcast is called The Gift. The documentary will be hosted by our own Janine Lauber, and it's designed to help raise community awareness about the desperate need for help. That's The Gift, and it will air Sunday, December 18th, 7 o'clock, right here on News 8 New England. Today, former U.S. Surgeon General C. Everett Koop joined forces with Hillary Rodham Clinton to kick off a nationwide Battle of the Bulge. Shape Up America focuses on reducing weight and increasing activity levels. Ironically, the campaign gets underway just as a new report warns dieters to get more information before joining a weight loss program. ABC's George Strait has the story. Last year, more than 10 million Americans spent more than $30 billion trying to lose weight. The National Academy of Sciences says much of that money was misspent. $30, $35 billion a year is spent on the management of obesity, and most of that money is spent in purchasing services and purchasing supplies from non-professional sources, from commercial sources. The result is that within five years, most people on diets regain all of the weight they have lost. The Academy makes a number of recommendations to improve that record. Lose all you want for just $185 service fee. First, the Academy says these slick commercials make sales pitches that are often misleading. Also, the Academy wants the diet industry to provide detailed evidence of success. So far, only one weight loss program, TOPS, has agreed to this recommendation. Also, the Academy wants diet counselors to be fully trained in nutrition. But the industry says that is not needed. I don't think that there's research to support uh, that the, um, you know, someone with that kind of training would be more successful than someone who does not. Sources say the Academy report will put pressure on the weight loss industry to agree to standards by which individual weight loss programs can be judged. Now, doctors say obesity kills 300,000 Americans every year and annually costs the nation $100 million. And that is tonight's edition of Your Family's Healthcast. Well, it's that time of year again. Time to start thinking about your New Year's resolution. Up next in your Kiplinger's Personal Money Report, details on one promise you probably should keep for yourself and for your family. This is the Grand Prix you were born for. 24 valve, 210 horsepower engine. You rock it down straightaways, toying with the asphalt emotions of the road. You wonder why your mother didn't name you Jacques. And if it wasn't for your Great Dane slobbering in your ear, you might forget it's a sport coupe. Dual airbags, anti-lock brakes. Yes, this is one heck of a car. The 1995 Pontiac Grand Prix. We are driving excitement. If you've ever dreamed of owning a beautiful grandfather clock, Green Mountain Furniture will make your dream come true. Green Mountain Furniture is offering all Ridgeway grandfather clocks at half price. Take any style you like. In stock, special order. Take it with you or lay it away. It's yours for half price. Come in today and make one of these heirloom quality clocks a tradition in your family. Green Mountain Furniture has more than meets the eye. Route 16, Ossipee, New Hampshire. Tomorrow, more tips on holiday entertaining the old-fashioned way. How to be the perfect host of a holiday get-together. Also, the latest ways for taking care of business when you're away from the office. Plus, musician Wynton Marsala and Demi Moore on the next Good Morning America. Tomorrow here on ABC. For healthier, shinier hair, I say start at the bottom with Pantene Pro-V Daily Conditioners. This was how I used to deal with split ends. Now, I help stop them before they start. Pantene's provitamin formula actually penetrates down to the tips, restoring your hair, making it healthier, shinier. Split ends? Try and find them. Pantene Pro-V conditioners every day for hair so healthy it shines. See you later, split ends. Your personal renaissance can begin with a call or a visit to Maine Billiards. Maine Billiards can bring one of these fine museum-quality works of art into your home. And guess what? You get to play with it. There are many beautiful designs and finishes to choose from, but one price includes everything you need to start enjoying this distinguished pastime with family and friends. Maine Billiards can also service or repair your existing table of any kind. And they carry a complete line of biking and Muchi accessories. Start a tradition or preserve an old one. Call Maine Billiards, Route 196 on the Lisbon-Lewiston line. This time of year, many of us are too focused on our holiday plans to worry about our New Year's resolutions. 
not to mention the fact that most resolutions are broken on or around January the 2nd. But the editors of Kiplinger's magazine say there's, say there's one New Year's resolution you probably should make this year and stick to for the sake of your family, and that's putting together a will. Start by drawing up a list of your assets, including real estate, bank accounts, investments, life insurance, and pensions. Anything that you think has value. Decide on how those assets should be divvied up among members of your family. Then choose an executor, someone you trust, who's willing to follow the guidelines you lay down. And if you have minor children, it's vital you decide on who do you want to take care of them if both parents should die. It makes sense to hire a lawyer to draw up the papers for you. A simple will will cost you about $200 to $300, well worth the price for getting an expert's advice. If you don't know a lawyer, check with your family or friends, or call the State Bar Association for a list of estate planning attorneys in your area. Now, experts say once you have a will, any major change in your life, such as the birth of a child or a grandchild, could mean a revision is in order. But no matter what, you should review your will at least once every five years. Still ahead tonight, you couldn't build a better mousetrap. We'll take you to this gigantic gingerbread mouse house right after this. On Saturday, December 10th in Portland, history will be made as Rush's Gusty Nazaroff defends his World Lightweight Championship against two-time world champion and number one contender, Maine's own Joey Gamache. The Russians may be tough, but I'm bringing the World Championship back to America. Budweiser presents the Cold War, Nazaroff versus Gamache. Saturday afternoon, December 10th, Cumberland County Civic Center. Be there. Floyd hit the Tri-State Megabucks jackpot last year and won a comfortable sum of money for 20 years. First thing Floyd did was buy himself a new tractor and a, well, let's call it a type of fertilizing equipment. Very practical. So when the neighbors ask Floyd what he's doing with all his money, he just says he's spreading it around. I wonder what he'll buy with the next 19 annual checks. Just imagine. Yeah. The all-new Subaru Impreza Coupe has dual airbags and crumple zones to help you survive accidents. But its real beauty is helping you avoid them. Subaru All-Wheel Drive is the ultimate safety feature. Transferring power automatically from the wheels that slip to the wheels that grip. It's the kind of safety no one can afford to be without. And at this price, no one has to be. The all-road, all-weather, all-wheel drive Subaru Impreza. The beauty of all-wheel drive. This Portland Pirates home game schedule is brought to you by Tri-State Lottery and Maine and New Hampshire Chevy dealers. One final check of our Wednesday weather. It's going to be pretty sloppy in some parts. Yeah, four spots now. For some folks, yeah, it'll be some rain showers during the day, and if you get home in time, it won't bother you a bit. But it will be changing to snow in some spots, particularly around Portland and south into York County and into southern and central sections of New Hampshire. And it may accumulate an inch or two here and there, too, and stay kind of, uh, kind of slippery right on mm -hmm. into the evening hours. Clearing for Thursday and Friday, another chance of rain or snow on Saturday. But you wake up to conditions that will be clouding up with temperatures in the 30s. You want your latest before you take off on your trip or your commute? Well, call the Skyline, 1-800-708-8818. And your weather forecast will be right there waiting for you, 24 hours a day. And at this hour, that's the way it looks from here. Your snow tires on yet? Not yet. I'm working on it, though. What are we going to do when you get your snow I tires I haven't seen on? the snow yet. Oh, I see. Too much of it, at least. Uh -huh. All right, Lou. Finally tonight, the holiday spirit is catching on from coast to coast. And out in California, the land of make-believe has made a very real and very big gingerbread house. Disney chefs took six months to make the colossal cookie. The eight-foot mouse house is made of 750 pounds of gingerbread, plus a generous portion of white chocolate and frosting. Kind of adds new meaning, Lou, to the phrase, sweet dreams. Mm-mm. Who needs cheese? <laughs> well, that is our report for tonight. Thanks for being with us. Stay tuned now for Nightline. We'll see you here tomorrow. Good night.
When you see news happening, dial star 08 on your main cellular phone or 1-800-CH-8-NEWS from any phone. December 6th, 1994.